Second Chronicles chapter 19. We talked about Jehoshaphat. He did right, but he was in fellowship with somebody who wasn't doing right, who was out of the will of God, and now comes payment time. Uh, the king that wasn't doing right, Ahab, is dead. God sent him lying prophets. He believed them. And now probably, most likely, 99% chance Ahab is in hell today for not listening to God. The Old Testament is much different from the New Testament. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. Well, he should have returned to his house when Micaiah spoke. Uh, that one prophet who was of the Lord that spoke right against the 400 who spoke wrong. He should have went home to his house when King Ahab said, Hey, you dress up as a king and I'm going to disguise myself as somebody else. And uh, I believe he was caught in battle, but I don't think he was injured. They turned their back on him. So he wasn't injured, but he could have been. He could have been killed by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him. You know, when you do wrong, God will send his people and his word out to get you. It's amazing how... How much in your life, when you, if you faithfully read your Bible, and God will come across and send that scripture into your heart when you're doing right and you're doing wrong. As much as doing right and even doing wrong. For the eyes of the Lord are in every place behold the evil and the good. And God sent this prophet and said to King Jehoshaphat, Choose thou help the ungodly? That's Ahab. God rebukes Jehoshaphat for helping a guy who doesn't want to have anything to do with God. And love them that hate the Lord. Well, Jesus said, they that keep my words shall love me. They that hate me don't read the Bible, don't keep the words, don't do what he told them to do. If you love me, you keep my commandments. Jehoshaphat walked the middle line. And God rebuked him. Like he rebukes the church in Revelation chapter three, you can't look, work, you can't walk lukewarm. You make God sick. And the thing is here, you're not to have fellowship with the unsaved. You're not to have, have fellowship with them that hate God. You're not to have fellowship with the ungodly. And that's what the scriptures say, black and white. Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. So when you disobey God, when you see the church age, you take the Lord's Supper, what do you have? You have sickness, you have weakness, and you have death. Because even the churches are walking with the ungodly and walking with them that love not the Lord. And Christians are walking with the ungodly and, and those that hate the Lord. We're supposed to have a band of those who do right. Listen, the eleven stuck together after Jesus uh, went back to heaven. And sitting on the right hand of God, they, they stuck together all through the book of Acts. Even when Paul and Silas and Barnabas and Mark were away, their hearts were still met with them. When demons said, hey, I'm going back, I'm tired of this. Paul said, goodbye. My heart aches, but goodbye. That's not the right route to take, I guarantee. Paul tried to, tried to talk to him, tried to get him to do right, but what's Paul right in 2 Timothy? Demas has forsaken me, going back to Thessalonica. So Jehoshaphat is a pretty good picture. And the wrath of God. You see the wrath of God in the church age? Oh yeah. Nevertheless, there's a good thing found in me. Well, he got the nation right. His heart is still right, as we're going to see later on in this chapter. A short chapter, and that's what prevents him from dying. Had his heart not been right, or had any good in him, in verse uh, 31 of chapter 18, he would have been dead too. And by the Old Testament standards, he would have been in hell just as much as Ahab would have been in. But luckily God looks upon the heart, and not, not the outward appearance as man does. That thou hast taken away the groves out of the land. Now look at that. Works. 
God saved him because he had the revival. He he put the, the, the rottenness out of the land. He tried to get the land right. It's not by the blood of, of Jesus. It's not the blood, the blood of goats and all that. It's his works. And in the Old Testament, you can say works. But you can't say the works today. Works can't save you. And has prepared thy heart to seek God. That's what it's all about. The heart is the motive. Where is your heart? You can fool anybody. You can fool anyone. But God knows the true motive of your heart. And evidently, even though Jehoshaphat did wrong, Jehoshaphat was in the wrong company, Jehoshaphat's heart was really with God. Because God said it was. He, even in chapter 18, in his wrong, he's still seeking after God. We're not told what, how, where. We're just told that his heart was, was trying to be right with God. And today we have 1 John 1, 9 to put our sins under the blood. I mean, we try to be perfect. We try. The motive of our heart is what we do, what we try to do. And we're going to sin. We're going to do wrong. But when we do wrong, when we sin, I mean, was it because we wanted to? Because it, it thrilled our soul? Was it, you know, it snuck up? And then how much pain and sorrow have we caused ourselves before God by doing the particular sin. And then you can say the heart was to seek God. Listen, I didn't want to do that, but I did. And then there are some sins that we just do out flat opening because we enjoy them. And those sins God will not wash away. Uh, how much blood of Christ? And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem. And he went out again through the people from Beersheba, that's down south, to Mount Ephraim. And brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. Alright, so he does wrong, but he gets back right. He repented. And not only did he repent, but he changed his life. He went back for the good. He went back to do right. He didn't go back to do wrong. And brought them back unto the Lord God their fathers. So not only him. He saw what damage he did to Israel. I mean Judah. I'll talk about Israel as a nation. Because he did northern Israel wrong too. By being in the wrong place. He made those Israels look. Ha! Look at that Christian over there. He must be one of us. He's hanging out with us. So it must be okay. Now he's going home. Now he's right with God. Now he's going to say, listen, we got to stand up. We got to do what God wants us to do. And I shamed Judah, so we're, we're all going to get right again. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city. And again, the fenced cities would be where the gates were. That's where they met. That was the city hall of what today, the town hall. That's where the judges and the Levites and the priests would sit. If you had any controversy, like the book of Ruth, that any issue, any judgment, any uh, deeds, any law business, you would go to the to the people of the gate. Lot sat in the gate. He was a man of importance in Sodom. This is where all the business deals would have been done at the gates. And he said to the judges, "Take heed what you do. Bear, pay attention to what you do. You're given an important job, not something to take lightly. For you judge not for man." Our nation judges for man. Because you can take bribes. You can take cutbacks. You can look upon a, a, a sports figure and feel sorry for him. You can look upon actresses and actresses and say, Oh, well, you know, we can give him a break. Where somebody who's just normal, uh, Tom, Dick, or Harry, well, we're going to throw the book at him. Where the IRS, I mean, they have enslaved people's lives. They have ruined people's lives. And now they've been caught red-handed. They're going to get off. They're going to be let go. They're not going to get the harshest penalties that they've done to people throughout their history. And that's what it's talking about here. But for the Lord. Now what does the Lord say? What, what, what Jehoshaphat is telling that judge. If God says you crucify him, or well, if, you give, if you capital punishment them, if they're to be rocked to sleep, 
then you do it. If the law says you pay four sheep, you pay four sheep. If the law says it is a sin and it's a penalty of law, it is a sin and it is a penalty of law, no matter who he is or what he is. You obey what God wrote in the book of Moses, the Old Testament. I don't care who it is, I don't care what it is. Who is with you in the judgment? Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Now that fear is shaking in your boots. Because if I don't do right, may God pass judgment upon me. If I don't do right, then, then God will step in. If I don't do right in judgment by what God says in the Old Testament, this nation is going to fall. Judah will fail. It will become corrupt. It will be violated as such Judah does become because the law and the judges do become corrupt and they do violate what God said. God means what he says and God wants you to obey what he says. And the only way to keep a nation right is if you do what God tells you to do. You don't change it. You don't call it another name. You don't give it pretty little names. You don't decorate it. If God says it's sin, it's sin. Plain and simple. America's failing because she's taking the laws of the, of the Bible and she's changing them, giving pretty little names and giving in to them and stepping them up and putting them on the platform and putting the Bible of God and the Christian into the closet. And the Christians are going in the closet without a fight. Take heed and do it. The law. Do it. That's just as much as go. Go and do. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, James says. That fits perfect right here. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God. God is not a sinner. God will never sin. God cannot sin. And never has, never will, and never, won't ever sin. His law is 100%. And if there's any trouble and there's any problem, it is you the sinner and not God. Don't go crying back to God why you've got troubles in your life because you disobeyed God. Don't go blame anybody else. Your parents, your husband, your wife, your children, uh, the ghetto, whatever it is. You didn't obey God. That's what he's telling these judges right here. Nor respect the persons. And again, that's a sports affiliate. Somebody who may be a mayor. Somebody who has money. Somebody who's higher up. Someone who has fame. When he comes before you, you I, listen, justice is supposed to be blind. That woman that we have the statue that represents justice in America with the scales, she has a blindfold on. She's not supposed to look. But yet, in America, we have judges that sit there and look at the, the plaintiff. They look at the defendant. That's wrong. That judge should be turned around facing a, away from the defendant, away from the, uh, the plaintiff. Matter of fact, he should be in another room, not even in the same room. And when they speak, their voice should be changed so he can't tell if it's a female, male, and if he's colored, if he's Asian, whatever he is. You shouldn't be able to tell. Same thing with the jury. You know, today, if you got a woman, well, they'll find an all-woman jury. If they, you got a little child or a child, and they'll get an all-woman jury. Bleeding hearts, they call it. Well, that's wrong. That's a violation of God. It ain't the justice today. It ain't nothing about the law. It's about who can put the great greatest show on. It's a soap opera. That's why it's on TV today, all these trials. Nor taking, nor taking of gifts, no bribery. Oh. Yeah, you get bribery today, diamond through justice and the lawmakers on Capitol Hill. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and of the priests. Now, there's that distinction. All priests are Levites, but all Levites are not priests. He puts those two distinction characters. Priests were to serve the Lord. Levites were to help the people and the priests. 
and of the chiefs of the fathers of Israel. Those will be the heads of the twelve tribes. Well, down south, the ten tribes. If anybody came from Israel down to Judah, they would have over their tribes too. For the judgment of the Lord, not man of the Lord. Whether uh, can't think of his fault now. Whether the Supreme Court knows it or not, whether they, they know God or not, they are judging for God, Romans chapter 13. Every judge in this world, whether they believe in God, Allah, or whoever, or know God, is judging for God, Romans 13. And they will give an account. I got unfair justice. They'll stand before either judgment, saved or lost. And God, the rightful judge, will judge and give rightful judgment in that day. You know what I mean? If you got somebody in jail today, let's say, honestly saying it's not a lie, I didn't do it. Well, we'll find out in either judgment who did it and who didn't. And God will exact justice as it is. You know, in heaven, there are some Christians that won't get crowns. There are some Christians who will get crowns. In hell, there is different, uh, I don't want to say degrees, there is different levels of hell. The Bible speaks about the lowest hell. The Bible speaks about the greater damnation. I would not want to be a pope in hell. He's going to get far more uh, hell than a native in Africa who just rejected God. Woe be to those who teach people, uh, as in Second uh, uh, Corinthians 11, who teach people out of the way to believe something else. They're going to have a greater damnation than those that they led astray. Anybody who comes to your door and brings, brings not Jesus Christ and wins anybody and teaches them, they're going to get a greater damnation. There's different degrees in heaven, and there's different degrees in hell by all what you do on this planet Earth. You think with a corrupt judge and all that, he will get his just desserts from the judge of all. And Jehoshaphat is making a state, listen, you better do right. He's warning them. He's proclaiming to them. He wants them to stand before God in righteousness. And he doesn't want Judah to fail. He doesn't want his kingdom to fail. Only an idiot who would lie in his office. Only an idiot who would be corrupt in his office and then expect to have a good kingdom, a good presidency, a good whatever you find the rulers of the world. You're not going to get it. And what Jehoshaphat is saying, listen, I love the Lord. I want to do right. And I want you judges to do right. And with this thing he puts here, I mean, if a judge was found wrong, Jehoshaphat will judge him. In other words, don't anger the king. This is you don't just read this, you know, more Jerusalem to blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm done with my reading. I'll go on to this to uh, the, the television guidelines to watch for the no. This is a warning. This is a stern warning. This is you better do right. And if they do wrong, there's no excuse because Jehoshaphat lays it all out on the line. More in Jerusalem did uh, Jehoshaphat set the Levites and of the priests and of the chief of the fathers for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. I mean, there are some things that you cannot. He did it. She did it. He did it. He did it. She did it. She did it. Well, who did it? I don't know. You got to bring those to the judges. And the judges and the priests. The Levites would bring it to the priests, and they bring it to the Lord. By the way of casting lots, or just with the Urim and the Thurim. Something. Say, Lord, what? Who, who is at fault here? Who's wrong? And God would tell the ultimate judgment. If the cases were too hard. If we were a Christian nation, these, these trials that we get today, we would seek God of above, not... 
the Supreme Court would be nothing. The Supreme Court would gather around before the public and get on their knees and say, God, we don't know what's going on here. We need your help. Listen, uh, James Knox told me by visiting Washington, D.C., when you go to the chief justice seat and look up, there's Moses with the Ten Commandments in his arm. And even the people that give the, the escorts to the place doesn't even know that. Imagine we live in a day and age when somebody looks at a, a picture of a bearded man with ten things in his arm and they don't even know it's Moses. You know we're out of the will of God. So you can't have faithful judgment if you don't know who God is. I believe that's Hebrews 11, around 6 and 7. You must believe who God is. And he charged him, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. He charges them. You are to fear the Lord to do right, as God is your judge. Faithfully. That means you give God and you give the people your your ultimate intention, your ultimate, your ultimate. You do the job right all the time. That's faithfulness. And a perfect heart. Again, that's not 100%. That means your motive. Even if you made a mistake in judgment, let's say there's that possibility that you made, made a boo-boo, but you really thought in your heart that you were right. You really believe you were right. I mean, listen, man is wrong. Man's a sinner. That's why you have to... That's why you have higher courts, and the higher courts are in the Bible too. They say, "Well, listen, I don't, I don't think this judge is right. I want to move up to the next court, and that judge could be wrong. Is he faithful? Is he of a good heart? Is he a perfect heart? Is he fear the Lord that the realize, hey, I made a judgment wrong, and he gets down on his knees and brings for the Old Testament what he needs to bring to get right, and seeks God more the next time he has a case, repenting." And whatsoever shall come to you, or, or, excuse me, and what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren, the Jews, that dwell in their cities, or anywhere, any Jew in any city, between blood and blood, murder, or my animal's dead, man's blood or animal blood, something happened. An accident, accidental death. Farmer woke up in the morning and there's a couple cows dead. He thinks the, the other guy did it. But he's not sure. Between law and commandment. The thou shalt not and then the law. And God lays the laws out. Did you obey with the written law what God said? Did you obey the commandment that God told you to do? Statutes and judgments, all found in the five books of Moses. Ye shall even warn them that they trespass, they go against, they cross the line, that they trespass not against the Lord. Well, somebody's already committed a crime. So what would this trespass not against the Lord? This trespass against the Lord would be when you find out what the judgment is, don't declare not to do it. You know, when you're fined the, the five sheep or you're, you're fined silver or that person is legally, bountifully, rightful for to be stoned, you do it. That's what the that's what Joe has meant, what the law says. Don't feel sorry for him. You do it. The greatest sins, the greatest damage, uh, and so Rav come yeah. Trespass not against you, and so Rav come upon you. If you don't do what God's tells you to do, wrath will come. And maybe not just the judges, 
for the land too and the people and Jehoshaphat the king Ahab got in trouble because his wife killed someone and upon your brethren see that the Jews one man can cause a bunch of trouble one misjudgment can cause a whole bunch of trouble one guy that, is, that thinks he can drive a car intoxicated can cause all kinds of trouble. I mean, this do, obey the Lord, not do wrong, and you shall not trespass. You do what God told you to do, you'll be right, and God will take care of you. Old Testament. Today, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Don't think just because you try to live right and do right, nothing's going to happen to you. You're still going to get it. And behold, Amariah the chief priest is over you in all matters of the Lord. You got any questions? You got any problems? You go to the chief priest. And he'll go to God if he can't solve it. You just saw the Supreme Court in the Bible. I mean, there's no one higher, as far as man, the chief priest, there's no one higher than God. I mean, in America, if we were a Christian nation and the Supreme Court was wrong, you can't go nowhere else. If we were a Christian nation and the Supreme Court was wrong, <coughs> we would take it in prayer before God and ask God to decide who's right and wrong. When was the last time you done that? When was the last time the Supreme Court justices and everybody in the House and everybody in the Senate and the President of the United States and the Vice President got down on their knees and said, Lord, we don't know what's going on with this case. Help us. You think if we were a right Christian nation, you think God would turn his back? You know how much blood is shed in this country right now and the people are still in jail? Where God says that he that sheds man's blood, his blood shall be shamed, slain, or shed. But they're still living in jails for many, many years. We're not doing right by God. You can't ask God to bless America when we haven't done what he told us to do. You mean you're asking God to, to, to be unholy? How dare you ask God to be unholy? God cannot bless this country because the murderers are still alive. It's impossible. Okay. In all matters of the Lord and Zebadiah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah. All right. As far as the families of Judah, this guy is in charge of all the tribe of Judah. And they're in the land of Judah. That's what the important there is. For all the king's matters, also the Levites shall be officers before you. Deal courageously, and the Lord shall be with the good. Not the evil, the good. If you do what God tells you to do, right will come out of it. But the problem is, those who are unholy, those who are unrighteous, those who are with the devil, are going to be angry. Tough. But we are in a nation now, and what uh, Jehoshaphat is saying, don't call evil good and don't call good evil. They will. Not these guys, but as we go through Second Chronicles. And too many Christians today are calling good evil and evil good, and they're violating uh, chapter 19. And God's angry with them. Then you turn around, oh, why is this happening? Why can't you bless me? Why can't you do right? Because you didn't do right. You sinned. You're in with the world. And God's not going to bless you with the world. Revelation chapter 3, you're making him sick. You are a liar. I'm increased with goods. I've got this. I got that. And God says you're miserable. You're naked, and you're wretched. 
You can't even face the truth. That's the problem. But no one wants to face the problem. No one wants a diagnosis. They want they want you know the the little thing. They want the, the boo boos and the cuts. <laughs>